Hi folks, the Filipino Uppie here. And today I'm gonna be dropping super-sized truth bombs on a target you might not expect. Many of you have an image in your mind of the stereotypical Filipino family with close bonds, warm embraces, and smiles all around. It's an image of the way things should be, where every member of the Filipino family unit is respected and nurtured. But in many cases, it's all a lie. For those of us Filipinos that know the truth, that picture sometimes doesn't apply because just under the surface, there's often a lot of backstabbing, shaming tactics, guilt trips, and a toxic atmosphere that's enough to poison the purest of hearts. Being a Filipino myself, I've seen the inner workings of hundreds of families here. I've seen firsthand what some of the common problems are and what can happen if you let it get to you. Now, most of us turn out just fine, but some of us pick up some really bad ideas. Enter the toxic Filipina. She might have a killer smile and seem just fine on the outside, but her personality has been warped by years of emotional manipulation. She can be hard to spot at first, but sooner or later, you're gonna see the reality behind a careful facade, and it can spell a rough road ahead for your relationship. If your partner's turning out to be one of the poisonous varieties, let me tell you how it probably started and what other behavior you can expect to see from a toxic Filipina. A lot of people don't realize it, but there are some very corrosive attitudes within many Filipino families. From birth, we're taught all kinds of things that can keep us from becoming healthy, mature adults, which also prevents us from becoming healthy, mature mates. If you happen to be watching this video with your Filipino partner, I'd be really interested to see how many of the following things she experienced growing up. And kudos to her for not letting it ruin her. It only matters what it looks like. Many Filipinos grew up with fiesta culture which is spending money we don't have to show off to the neighbors. You could come from a family that barely has enough to eat, but somehow, when it's time for the festival, your parents manage to produce a table with enough food on it to feed the entire village, just so they don't look poor, even when they are. Lord only knows where they got the money, but nothing must be allowed to interfere with the family's image. Image is everything. And that's a lesson that Filipino kids learn early on. It's important to show off whenever you can, even if it costs you, in ways you can't afford. You also figure out that your needs aren't really that important, only the image you can project to others. You might say, oh, we have that same thing in the West. But trust me, we Filipinos take it to extremes, and it leaves a lasting mark we never forget. The blame game. This is one of the most toxic aspects of Filipino family life because it ends up shaping our behavior as adults. A Filipino that falls victim to this mentality as a child can have real problems later on, especially with a foreign partner who demands transparency. It's the culture of deny, deny, deny. And many Filipino children know that if they get caught doing something wrong, their first defense better be searching for a way to deny any involvement. If a convincing lie is the most handy life preserver, use it. Blame the dog, blame your friend, but never, under any circumstances, admit to wrongdoing. It all goes back to that philosophy of, it only matters what it looks like, not what it really is. And trying to get a Filipino to admit he did something bad it's like trying to nail jello to a tree. We'll squirm to the left, squirm to the right, and point to whoever we think can take the fall. This probably sounds like a horrible philosophy, and it is. It's true in a lot of relationships between Filipinas and foreigners, because when your go-to defense is to look for an excuse, the truth gets left behind, and trust is a hard thing to recover. It's frustrating to try to reason with someone who's always looking to save their image and avoid responsibility. And it doesn't really help much when you catch someone red-handed and they still refuse to admit it. 
I've talked with foreigners who say it's the main reason they broke up with their partner. And it all started way back in childhood, when a little Filipino was too afraid to tell her parents that she was the one that spilled the bag of rice. I don't want to hear it. Many Filipino parents simply don't want to hear what a child has to say. Their job is to hand down the law from on high, and a child's job is to just shut up and obey. Ideas and suggestions are usually unwelcome, even when they're good ones, because after all, a child is just a child, so their ideas are ignored by default. And arguing with a parent is a losing proposition that will only get you the back of their hand. This becomes a really bad situation as a child grows up and tries to figure things out for themselves because there's always someone telling them that their ideas are no good and it has the effect of stifling things like curiosity and creativity. But at least we all become good little soldiers in the family clan. Whatever will be, will be whatever I say. Filipino parents often choose their kids' education as well as their future occupations. The thinking for that goes like this. Since they're responsible for bringing you into this world, and they sacrifice resources to raise you, they get to decide what field you go into to ensure you have the means to pay them back. This is not always the case, of course, but for many of the Filipinos watching this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You might even be told flat out to your face that it's your responsibility to provide for your parents for the rest of their lives. Your desires have to take a back seat to the needs of your parents, which leaves the distinct impression of someone who's an investment rather than a product of love. It also kills your ability to save anything for your future, and it ends up passing the same obligation onto your kids. Now, I'm not a psychologist, but this kind of arrangement doesn't leave a lot of room for following your dreams either, because you're supposed to concentrate on whatever's good for your parents. If Filipino kids were named according what function they served, there'd be a lot of us called 401k. R-E-S-P-E-C-T Respect is demanded, not earned. And if they're older relatives, you're supposed to just automatically respect them, no matter what. It's all based on age, not wisdom. So even if your lolo hasn't done anything more stimulating than plow the same field for 30 years, while you visited a dozen countries and published a book, you still have to pretend that his opinions on how you should raise your kids carry as much weight as your own. I'm not sure why age is more important than accomplishments in this society, but there's a clear hierarchy here, and having more birthdays is the only way of getting to the top of it. The Golden Boy There will always be a golden child that can do no wrong and dark times will befall any sibling who's ungrateful enough to mention it. The golden child is almost always a boy, and even if it's the eldest, nothing will be expected of him. If his grades are bad, or he drinks too much, his behavior will be covered by an avalanche of excuses, and everyone in the family knows that there's a price to pay for any child who dares to mention the unfair double standard. To add insult to injury, the other siblings might even be expected to help pay for the golden boy's mistakes, from the time he wrapped his motorbike around a tree to the time he got fired for being drunk on the job and can't afford his rent. You'll be expected to chip in to save the golden boy, because if a family member's in need, that's all that matters. Accountability be damned. Mine is mine, and yours is ours. If someone in a Filipino family comes into money, either from landing a great job, working double shifts, or marrying someone with wealth, they're expected to share it with everyone else. If you get a big promotion at work, you're supposed to treat your family and friends to a feast, and some parents expect you to give them your first paycheck. It doesn't matter how hard you work for it, it only matters that you have it, and if you fail to spread it around, you'll be shamed by the other members of your family. It's almost like you're an ant, and you just came across a juicy dead bug, and you're expected to drag it back to the rest of the colony. 
Who cares if you're the one who found it? That doesn't make it yours. Well, a lot of you can see the problem with the system. Why work hard to produce when everyone else gets it too? Why be an overachiever when you can just sit back and let other people do the heavy lifting? And the fact that you don't get the benefit of your own labor just reinforces the idea that you're not an individual, just a nameless ant in the colony. And in the case of a Filipina with a foreign partner, it creates a conflict of interest, with a Filipina stuck between her mate and the expectations of her family. I don't even need to tell you the problems that's caused. Bury the hatchet in your back. No matter what a family member does to you, no matter if they've lied about you or stabbed you in the back, a bad deed is supposed to be forgotten instantly, as if it never happened. And you're not supposed to mention it ever again. That's considered digging up the past, even if it just happened last week. If a relative steals your carabao and sells it, even if you catch them doing it, don't be surprised if they actually have the nerve to turn to you when they need money. Because in their mind, you should just forgive them and help them out. If you don't, the rest of the family might wonder what's wrong with you for not helping a relative in need. And you end up looking like the bad guy. I know it sounds ridiculous, but there are often no repercussions for bad behavior within the family. And you can imagine what kind of message that sends. It basically means that you are not important and you have no right to withhold help from people that have wronged you. What a mess! Don't be a smarty pants. If you stick out in any way, if you're too smart, too dumb, too rich, too poor, too tall, too short, too funny, too dull, there's a good chance you'll be picked on or even shamed by the members of your own family. Maybe it's another version of crab mentality, but if you excel in school, your siblings, and even a lot of your friends are going to make nasty comments about you behind your back to keep you in line so you're more like them. The message you're supposed to get is that you're not really an individual and you're certainly no one special. Having dreams of starting your own business or being your own boss is something you'll never achieve. So why even try? Just get a job and be a good employee like everyone else. What do you mean by that? One of the most misused concepts in our society is called Filipino pride. I know it sounds great on the surface. Why not be proud to be a Filipino? The problem is, it's often used as cover for being hypersensitive to criticism. If you say anything bad, anything at all, about Filipinos or Filipino culture, you're almost definitely going to get a nasty backlash from anyone that hears you. There's no attempt at self-reflection, no acknowledgement that someone might actually have a point. Just an instant negative reaction based solely on emotion and a need to strike back. For those of you that don't already know, Filipinos are about the most sensitive people on the planet. And we have a tendency to assume the worst every time someone says something we don't understand or don't agree with. Have you ever dated a Filipina who takes everything you say the wrong way? Like, if you tell her she looks good in a dress and she instantly assumes you mean she looks ugly in shorts. Or if you tell a joke and she doesn't get it, she jumps to the conclusion that somehow she's the punchline. The result of all this sensitivity is a person who's constantly looking for reasons to be offended all the time, which can really get tiresome to have to deal with. It's also a part of the tribal mentality here, where any assault on a member of your clan, whether it's physical or verbal or even just a perceived insult, means the whole clan is expected to respond by swarming the attacker. I'm sure that attitude was useful in our distant past, but being so sensitive to every little injustice is something that just holds us back. I'm not proud of the way some people hide behind Filipino pride, and I'm sure I get attacked for saying so. Now, let me reiterate that not all families exhibit this level of toxicity, but most families have at least some of these traits. And while the average Filipina might escape her childhood without becoming a wreck, some of us aren't so lucky. As a result of all this mess, 
you might end up with a woman who's obsessed with image and status, who's preoccupied with what other people think. She might have problems accepting responsibility, with a need to blame anyone but herself, using lies as her go-to response as a kind of built-in defense mechanism. She might seem brainwashed when it comes to obeying her parents and feeling like she's responsible for a whole host of people that don't seem to have the same level of concern for her. All these things can cause countless fights and problems and be fatally toxic to your chances of happiness. If you're really patient and take the time to try to undo all the programming, then you have my admiration and respect. But on the other hand, if you choose to run like hell, I sure can't blame you. Well, that's it for today's Dose of Reality. And I'll be back on Friday with a topic that's not quite so serious. See you then, folks. Sir, do you have any idea how fast you were speeding? Speeding through my video, skipping all the ads, and not paying attention to a word I said? I'm gonna let you go with a warning this time. A warning that you better give a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to my channel. Got it? I don't even want to watch your stupid videos. Alright, out of the car. I think this one needs a full cavity search. The hard way. And for the rest of you good citizens, may I suggest watching my other videos too? Just remember, I can have you in handcuffs anytime I want. <laughs>